This video is part of an audiobook series featuring The Fourth Industrial Revolution, written in 2016 by Klaus Schwab. For more audiobooks, please visit my YouTube channel or my website for downloads. 3.2 Business Beyond the changes in growth patterns, labor markets, and the future of work that will naturally influence all organizations, there is evidence that the technologies that underpin the fourth industrial revolution are having a major impact, impact on how businesses are led, organized, and resourced. One particular symptom of this phenomenon is the historical reduction in the average lifespan of a corporation listed on the S&P 500, which has dropped from around 60 to approximately 18 years. Another is the shift in the time it takes new entrants to dominate markets and hit significant revenue milestones. Facebook took six years to reach revenue of $1 billion a year, and Google just five. There is no doubt that emerging technologies, almost always powered and enabled by digital capabilities, are increasing the speed and scale of change for businesses. This also reinforces an underlying theme in my conversations with global CEOs and senior business executives, namely, that the deluge of information available today, the velocity of disruption, and the acceleration of innovation are hard to comprehend or anticipate. They constitute a source of constant surprise. In such a context, it is a leader's ability to continually learn, adapt, and challenge his, her own, his or her own conceptual and operating models of success that will distinguish the next generation of successful business leaders. Therefore, the first imperative of the business impact made by the fourth industrial revolution is the urgent need to look at oneself as a business leader and at one's own organization. Is there evidence of the organization and leadership capacity to learn and change? Is there a track record of prototyping and investment decision making at a fast pace? Does the culture accept innovation and failure? Everything I see indicates that the free ride will own, or that the ride will only get faster. The changes will be more fundamental, and the journey will therefore require a hard and honest look at the ability of organizations to operate with speed and agility. Sources of disruption. Multiple sources of disruption trigger different forms of business impact. On the supply side, many industries are seeing the introduction of new technologies that create entirely new ways of serving existing needs and significantly disrupt existing value chains. Examples abound. New storage and grid technologies and energy will accelerate the shift toward more decentralized sources. The widespread adoption of 3D printing will make distributed manufacturing and spare part maintenance easier and cheaper. Real-time information and intelligence will provide unique insights on customers and asset performance that will amplify other technological trends. Disruption also flows from agile, innovative competitors who, by accessing global digital platforms for research, development, marketing, sales, and distribution, can overtake well-established incumbents faster than ever by improving the quality, speed, or price at which they deliver value. This is the reason why many business leaders consider, consider their biggest threat to be competitors that are not yet regarded as such. It would be a mistake, however, to think that competitive disruption will come only through startups. Digitization also enables large incumbents to cross industry boundaries by leveraging their customer base, infrastructure, or technology. The move of telecommunications companies into healthcare and automotive segments are examples. Size can still be a competitive advantage if smartly leveraged. Major shifts on the demand side are also disrupting businesses. Increasing transparency, consumer engagement, and new patterns of consumer behavior, increasingly built upon access to mobile networks and data, force companies to adapt the way they design, market, and deliver existing and new products and services. Overall, I see the impact of the fourth industrial revolution on business as an inexorable shift from the simple digitization that characterized the third industrial revolution to a much more complex form of innovation based on the combination of multiple technologies in novel ways. This is forcing all companies to re-examine the way they do business and takes on different forms. For some companies, capturing new frontiers of value may consist of developing new businesses in adjacent segments, while for others, it is about identifying shifting pockets of value in existing sectors. The bottom line, however, remains the same. 
business leaders and senior executives need to understand that disruption affects both the demand and supply sides of their business. This, in turn, must compel them to challenge the assumptions of their operating teams and find new ways of doing things. In short, they have to innovate continuously. In sum, four major impacts. The fourth industrial revolution has four main effects on business across industries. One, customer expectations are shifting. Two, products are being enhanced by data, which improves asset productivity. Three, new partnerships are being formed as companies learn the importance of new forms of collaboration. And four, operating models are being transformed into new digital models. 3.2.1, Customer Expectations. Customers, whether as individuals, B2C, or businesses, B2B, are increasingly at the center of the digital economy, which is all about how they are served. Customer expectations are being redefined into experiences. The Apple experience, for example, is not just about how we use the product, but also how the packaging, the brand, the, cu- the shopping, and the customer service are constructed. Apple is thus redefining expectations to include product experience. Traditional approaches to demographic segmentation are shifting to targeting through digital criteria, where potential customers can be identified on their willingness to share data and interact. As the shift from ownership to shared access accelerates, particularly in cities, data sharing will be a necessary part of the value proposition. For example, car sharing schemes will require the integration of personal and financial information across multiple companies in the automotive, utility, communications, and banking sectors. Most companies profess to to be customer-centric, but their claims will be tested as real-time data and analytics are applied to the way they target and serve their customers. The digital age is about accessing and using data, refining the products and experiences, and moving to a world of continual adjustment and refinement while ensuring that the human dimension of the interaction remains at the heart of the process. It is the ability to tap into multiple sources of data, from personal to industrial, from lifestyle to behavioral, that offers granular insights into the customer's purchasing journey that would have been inconceivable until recently. Today, data and metrics deliver in quasi-real-time critical insights into customer needs and behaviors that drive marketing and sales decisions. This trend of digitization is currently toward more transparency, meaning more data in the supply chain, more data at the fingertips of consumers, and hence more peer-to-peer comparisons on the performance of products that shift power to consumers. As an example, price comparison websites make it easy to compare prices, also the quality of service and the performance of the product. In a mouse click or finger swipe, consumers instantaneously move away from one brand, service, or digital retailer to the next. Companies are no longer able to shirk accountability for poor performance. Brand equity is a prize hard won and easily lost. This will only be amplified in a more transparent world. To a large extent, the millennial generation on setting consumer trends. The millennial generation is setting consumer trends. We now live in an on-demand world where 30 billion WhatsApp messages are sent every day and where 87% of young people in the U.S. say that their smartphone never leaves their side and 44% use their camera function daily. This is a world which is much more about peer-to-peer sharing and user-generated content. It is a world of the now, a real-time world where traffic directions are instantaneously provided and groceries are delivered directly to your door. This now world requires companies to respond in real time wherever they are or their customers or clients may be. It would be a mistake to assume that this is confined to high-income societies. Take online shopping in China. On November 11, 2015, dubbed Singles Day by the Alibaba Group, the e-commerce service handled online transactions with more than $14 billion, with 68% of sales through mobile devices. Another example is Sub-Saharan Africa, which is the fastest growing region in terms of mobile phone subscriptions, demonstrating how mobile internet is leapfrogging fixed line access. GSM Association expects an additional 240 million mobile internet users in Sub-Saharan Africa over the next five years. 
And while advanced economies have the highest penetration rates of social media, East Asia, Southeast Asia, and Central America are above the global average of 30% and growing fast. WeChat, a China-based mobile text and voice messaging service, gained around 150 million users in just 12 months to the end of 2015, featuring a year-on-year growth of at least 39%. 3.2.2. Data-Enhanced Products New technologies are transforming how organizations perceive and manage their assets, as products and services are enhanced with digital capabilities that increase their value. Tesla, for example, shows how over-the-air software updates and connectivity can be used to enhance a product, in this example a car, after purchase, rather than let it depreciate over time. Not only are new materials making assets more durable and resilient, but data and analytics are also transforming the role of maintenance. Analysis provided by sensors placed on assets enables their constant monitoring and proactive maintenance, and in doing so, maximizes their utilization. It is no longer about finding specific faults, but rather about using performance benchmarks, based on data supplied by sensors and monitored through algorithms, that can highlight when a piece of equipment is moving outside its normal operating window. On aircrafts, for example, the airline control centers know before the pilots do if an engine is developing a fault on a particular plane. They can therefore instruct the pilot on what to do and mobilize the maintenance crew in advance at the flight destination. In addition to maintenance, the ability to predict the performance of an asset enables new business models to be established. Asset performance can be measured and monitored over time. Analytics provide insights on operational tolerances and provide the basis for outsourcing products that are not core or strategic to the the needs of the business. SAP is an example of a company that is leveraging data from physical products embedded in agriculture to increase uptime and utilization. The ability to predict the performance of an asset also offers new opportunities to price services. Assets with high throughput such as lifts or walkways, can be priced by asset performance, and service providers can be paid on the basis of actual performance against a threshold of 99.5% uptime over a given period. Take the example of truck fleets. Long-distance haulers are interested in propositions where they pay tire manufacturers by the 1,000 kilometers of road rather than, rather of use, rather than periodically just buying new tires. This is because the combination of sensors and analytics allows tire companies to monitor driver performance, fuel consumption, and tire wear to offer a complete end-to-end service. 3.2.3 Collaborative Innovation A world of customer experiences, data-based services, and asset performance through analytics requires new forms of collaboration, particularly given the speed at which innovation and disruption are taking place. This is true for incumbents and established businesses, but also for young dynamic firms. The former often lack specific skills and have lower sensitivity to evolving customer needs, while the latter are capital poor and lack the rich data generated by mature operations. As the forum's Collaborative Innovation, Transforming Business and Driving Growth report outlines, When firms share resources through collaborative innovation, significant value can be generated for both parties as well as for the economies in which such collaborations take place. One such example is the recent collaboration between the industrial giant Siemens, which spends around $4 billion a year in R&D, and Ayasti, an innovation machine learning company and forum technology pioneer founded at Stanford in 2008. This partnership gives Siemens access to a partner that can help solve complex challenges of extracting insights from vast data, while Ayasti can validate its topological data analysis approach with real-world data while expanding market presence. Such collaborations, however, are often far from straightforward. They require significant investment from both parties to develop firm strategy, search for appropriate partners, and establish communication channels align processes, and flexibly respond to changing conditions both inside and outside the partnership. Sometimes, such collaborations spawn entirely new business models, such as city car-sharing schemes, 
which bring together businesses from multiple industries to provide an integrated customer experience. This is only as good as the weakest link in the partnership chain. Companies need to go well beyond marketing and sales agreements to understand how to adopt comprehensive collaborative approaches. The fourth industrial revolution forces companies to think about how offline and online worlds work together in practice. 3.2.4 New Operating Models All these different impacts require companies to rethink their operating models. Accordingly, strategic planning is being challenged by the need for companies to operate faster and with greater agility. As mentioned earlier, an important operating model enabled, enabled by the network effects of digitization is the platform. While the third industrial revolution saw the emergence of purely digital platforms, the hallmark of the fourth industrial revolution is the appearance of global platforms intimately connected to the physical world. The platform strategy is both profitable and disruptive. Research by the MIT Sloan School of Management shows that 14 out of the top 30 brands by market capitalization in 2013 were platform-oriented companies. Platform strategies, combined with the need to be more customer-centric and to enhance products with data, are shifting many industries from a focus on selling products to delivering service. An increasing number of consumers no longer purchase and own physical objects, but rather pay for the delivery of the underlying service which they access via a digital platform. It is possible, for example, to get, access, get digital access to billions of books via Amazon's Kindle store, to almost any song in the world via Spotify, or to join a car-sharing enterprise that provides mobility services without the need to own a vehicle. This shift is a powerful one and allows for more transparent, sustainable models of exchanging value in the economy. But it also creates challenges in how we define ownership, how we curate and engage with unlimited content, and how we interact with the increasingly powerful platforms that provide these services at scale. The World Economic Forum's work in this digital transformation of industries initiative highlights a number of other business and operating models designed to capitalize on the fourth industrial revolution. The previously mentioned customer centricity is one of these, with proponents such as Nespresso focusing their efforts on frontline processes and empowering staff to put the client first. Frugal business models use the opportunities afforded by the interaction of digital, physical, and human realms to open up new forms of optimization, such as efforts by Michelin to provide high-quality services at low cost. Data-powered business models create new revenue sources from their access to valuable information on customers in a broader context and increasingly rely on analytics and software intelligence to unlock insights. Open and liquid companies position themselves as a part of a fluid ecosystem of value creation, while Skynet firms focus on automation, becoming more prevalent in hazardous industries and locations. There, and there are many examples of businesses pivoting toward business models that focus on employing new technologies to make more efficient use of energy and material flows, thereby preserving resources, lowering costs, and having a positive impact on the environment. These transformations mean that business will need to invest heavily in cyber and data security systems to avoid direct disruption by criminals, activists, or unintentional failures in digital infrastructure. Estimates of the total annual cost to business of cyber attacks are the order of magnitude of 500 billion US dollars. The experiences of companies such as Sony, TalkTalk, Target, and Barclays indicate that losing control of sensitive corporate and customer data has a material negative effect on share prices. This accounts for why Bank of America Merrill Lynch estimates that the cybersecurity market will more than double from around $75 billion in 2015 to $170 billion by 2020, implying an annual growth rate of more than 15% for the industry in the coming five years. Emerging operating models also mean that talent and culture have to be rethought in light of new skill requirements and the need to attract and retain the right sort of human capital. As data becomes central to both decision-making and operating models across industries, workforces require new skills, while processes need to be upgraded. For example, to take advantage of the availability of real-time information. And company cultures need to evolve. 
As I mentioned, companies need to adapt the concept of talentism. This is one of the most important emerging drivers, drivers of competitiveness. In a world where talent is the dominant form of strategic advantage, the nature of organizational structures will have to be rethought. Flexible hierarchies, new ways of measuring and rewarding performance, new strategies for attracting and retaining skilled talent will, become, will all become key to organizational success. A capacity for agility will be as much about employee motivation and communication as it will be about setting business priorities and managing physical assets. My sense is that successful organizations will increasingly shift from hierarchical structures to more networked and collaborative models. Motivation will be increasingly intrinsic, driven by the collaborative desire of employees and management for mastery, independence, and meaning. This suggests that businesses will become increasingly organized around distributed teams, remote workers, and dynamic collectives, with a continuous exchange of data and insights about the things or tasks being worked on. An emerging workplace scenario that reflects this change builds on the rapid rise of wearable technology when combined with the Internet of Things, which is progressively enabling companies to blend digital and physical experiences to benefit workers as well as consumers. For example, workers operating with highly complex equipment or in difficult situations can use wearables to help design and repair components. Downloads and updates to connected machinery ensure that both workers in the field and the capital equipment they use are kept up to date with the latest developments. In the world of the fourth industrial revolution, where it is standard practice to upgrade cloud-based software and refresh data assets through the cloud, it will be even more important to ensure that humans and their skills keep pace. Combining the digital, physical, and biological worlds. Companies able to combine multiple dimensions, digital, physical, biological, often succeed in disrupting an entire industry and their related systems of production, distribution, and consumption. Uber's popularity in many cities starts with an improved customer experience, tracking of the car location via a mobile device, a description of the car standards, and a seamless payment process, thus avoiding delays at the destination. The experience has been enhanced and bundled with the physical product, transportation of a person from A to B, by optimizing the utilization of the asset, the car owned by the driver. In such cases, the digital opportunities are often not translated into just a higher price or lower cost, but also into a fundamental change of the business model. This is driven by an end-to-end -end approach, from service acquisition to delivery. These combination-based business models illustrate the extent of the disruption that occurs when digital assets and interesting combinations of existing digital platforms are used to reorganize relationships with physical assets, marking a notable shift from ownership to access. In their markets, neither company owns the assets. A car driver owns the car and makes it available. A homeowner makes the room available. In both cases, the competitive advantage is built on a superior experience, combined with reduced transaction and friction costs. Also, these companies match demand and supply in a rapid and convenient manner, which sidesteps the business models of the incumbents. This marketplace approach progressively erodes the long-established position of incumbents and dismantles the boundaries between industries. Many senior executives expect industry convergence to be the primary force impacting their business in the next three to five years. Once a customer has established a track record of trust and confidence on the platform, it becomes easy for the digital provider to offer other products and services. Fast-moving competitors provoke a disaggregation of the more traditional industry silos and value chains and also disintermediate the existing relationship between businesses and their customers. New disruptors can rapidly scale at a much lower cost than the incumbents, generating in the process a rapid growth in their financial returns through network effects. Amazon's evolution from a bookseller to a $100 billion a year retail conglomerate shows how customer loyalty, combined with insights on preferences and solid execution, can lead to selling across multiple industries. It also demonstrates the benefits of scale. In almost all industries, digital technologies have created new, disruptive ways of combining products and services and, in the process, have dissolved the traditional boundaries between industries. 
in the automotive realm, a car is now a computer on wheels, with electronics representing roughly 40% of the cost of a car. The decision made by Apple and Google to enter the automotive market shows that a tech company can now transform into a car company. In the future, as the value shifts toward the electronics, the technology and licensing software may prove more strategically beneficial than the manufacturing of the car, per se. The finance industry is going through a similar period of disruptive change. P2P, or peer-to-peer platforms, are now dismantling barriers to entry and lowering costs. In the investment business, new robo-advisory algorithms and their corresponding apps provide advisory services and portfolio tools at a fraction of the old transaction cost, about half a percent instead of traditional 2%, thereby threatening a whole segment of the current financial industry. The industry is also aware that blockchain will soon revolutionize the way it operates, because it's possible applications in finance have the opportunity to reduce settlement and transaction cost by up to $20 billion and transform the way the industry works. The shared database technology can streamline such varied activities as the storage of client accounts, cross-border payments, and the settling and clearing of trades, as well as products and services that do not yet exist, such as smart futures contracts that self-execute without a trader. For example, a credit derivative that pays out automatically when a country or company defaults. The healthcare industry is also faced with the challenge of incorporating simultaneous advances in physical, biological, and digital technologies, as the development of new diagnostic approaches and therapies coincides with the push to digitize patient records and capitalize on the wealth of information that can be gathered from wearable devices and implantable technologies. Not all industries are at the same point of disruption, but all are being pushed up a curve of transformation by the forces driving the fourth industrial revolution. There are differences according to industry and demographic profile of the customer base. But in a world characterized by uncertainty, the ability to to adapt is critical. If a company is unable to move up the curve, it may be pushed off it. The companies that survive or thrive will need to maintain and continually sharpen their innovative edge. Businesses, industries, and corporations will face continuous Darwinian pressures, and, as such, the philosophy of always in beta, or always evolving, will become more prevalent. This suggests that the global number of entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs will increase, Small and medium-sized enterprises will have the advantages of speed and agility needed to deal with disruption and innovation. Large organizations, by contrast, will survive by leveraging their scale advantages and investing in their ecosystem of startups and SMEs by acquiring and partnering with smaller and more innovative businesses. This will enable them to maintain autonomy in their respective businesses while also allowing for more efficient and agile operations. Google's recent decision to reorganize into a holding company called Alphabet is a vivid example of this trend, driven by the need to sustain its innovative character and maintain its agility. Finally, as the next section details, the regulatory and legislative landscapes will significantly shape how researchers, businesses, and citizens develop, invest, and adopt in both emerging technologies and the operating models that enable them to create value for users. While new technologies and innovative businesses offer new products and services that can improve the lives of many, those same technologies and the systems that support them could also create impacts we wish to avoid. These range from widespread unemployment and increased inequality, which was discussed previously, to the dangers of automated weapon systems and new cyber risk. While perspectives on what constitutes the right mix of regulation may vary, my conversations with government, business, and civil society leaders indicate that they share the same overarching goal, to create agile, responsible regulatory and legislative ecosystems that will allow innovation to thrive while minimizing its risks to ensuring the stability and prosperity of society. The convergence of the physical, digital, and biological worlds that is at the heart of the fourth industrial revolution offers significant opportunity for the world to achieve gains in resource use and efficiency. 
As Project Mainstream, the World Economic Forum's initiative to accelerate the transition to the circular economy has shown, the promise is not just that individuals, organizations, and governments can have less impact on the natural world, but also that there is great potential to restore and regenerate our natural environment through the use of technologies and intelligent systems design. At the heart of this promise is the opportunity to shift businesses and consumers away from the linear take-make-dispose model of resource use, which relies on large quantities of easily accessible resources, and toward a new industrial model where effective flows of materials, energy, labor, and now information interact with one another and promote by design a restorative, regenerative, and more productive economic system. There are four pathways that will help take us there. First, thanks to the Internet of Things and intelligent assets, it is now possible to track materials and energy flows so as to achieve new, huge new efficiencies all the way along value chains. Of the $14.4 trillion in economic benefits that Cisco estimates will be realized from the IoT in the next decade, $2.7 trillion in value can be gained from elimination of waste and improved processes in supply chains and logistics. IoT-enabled solutions could reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 9.1 billion tons by 2020, representing 16.5% of the projected total in that year. Second, the democratization of information and transparency that comes from digitized assets gives new powers to citizens to hold companies and countries accountable. Technologies such as blockchain will help make this information more trustworthy, for example, by capturing and certifying satellite monitoring data on deforestation in a secure format to hold landholders to account more closely. Third, new information flows and increasing transparency can help shift citizen behavior on a large scale as it becomes the path of least resistance within a new set of business and social norms for a sustainable circular system. Fruitful convergence between the fields of economics and psychology has been producing insights into how we perceive the world, behave, and justify our behavior, while a number of large-scale randomized control trials by governments, corporations, and universities have shown that this can work. One example is O-Power, which uses peer comparison to entice people into consuming less electricity, thereby protecting the environment while reducing costs. Fourth, as the previous section detailed, new business and organizational models pr promise innovative ways of creating and sharing value, which in turn lead to whole system changes that can actively benefit the natural world as much as our economies and societies. Self-driving vehicles, the sharing economy, and leasing models all result in significantly higher asset utilization rates, as well as making it far easier to capture, reuse, and upcycle materials when the appropriate time comes. The fourth industrial revolution will enable firms to extend the use cycle of assets and resources, increase their utilization, and create cascades that recover and repurpose materials and energy for further uses, lowering emissions and resource loads in the process. In this revolutionary new industrial system, carbon, carbon dioxide turns from a greenhouse pollutant into an asset and the economics of carbon capture and storage move from being a cost as well as a pollution sinks to becoming profitable carbon capture and use production facilities. Even more important, it will help g companies, governments, and citizens become more aware of and engaged with strategies to actively regenerate natural capital, allowing intelligent and regenerative uses of natural capital to guide sustainable production and consumption, and give space for biodiversity to recover in threatened areas. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and visit my channel for more exciting content.